Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, this hearing has been a long time coming, and uh, there was some commentary from my colleague across the aisle saying that we have better things to work on and should not be wasting our time. I never want us to lose sight of the impact on real people's lives when we are talking about policy. And that is, in fact, why the American people sent us here, so uh, we are not wasting our time. Uh, gentlemen, it is disappointing that it took the threats of subpoenas to bring you before our committee today. In a moment, I'll turn uh, more to your actions. But first, I want to center the families that have been impacted by this egregious policy shift. Families like my constituents, the Sanchez family, and Serena Ibinez and her mom, Conchita. I told them um, when I met them that I would fight for their children as if they were my own, and I intend to honor that. 16-year-old Jonathan bravely came before this committee and shared his story. He spoke of how uh, cystic fibrosis has ravaged his body, and in fact, um, the tragic death of his younger uh, sister in Honduras, uh, who suffered similarly. The reckless actions of your agency that have put his very ability to receive life-preserving medical care at risk are just unconscionable. For 88, 83 days, Mr. Chairman, nearly three months now, we have been demanding answers out of this administration. Uh, Mr. Cuccinelli, you testified that you understand that we want more paperwork, but you simply don't have it. Uh, none of us here, uh, we're in government, we don't want more paperwork. Um, but what we do want are real answers and uh, justice for these families and a peace of mind, and they deserve that, and their children deserve that. And so for nearly three months, we have been demanding answers out of this administration for its horrendous and callous efforts to deport our critically ill immigrant neighbors and their families. And while I am relieved that the policy has been reversed, these families and the American people deserve answers. They deserve the certainty that they will be able to remain in this country. So I'd like to thank the brave families like these and countless others who despite the traumatic and imminent fear of deportation and having to fight a life-threatening illness stepped up and spoke out to shine a light on this injustice as well as the attorneys and the advocacy uh, organizations. I'd also I'd like to request unanimous consent to include statements for the record from the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights in Boston as well as the American Immigrant Lawyers Association. Without objection, they'll be entered into the record. Thank you. Now, gentlemen, your agencies have still failed to turn over a single document in response to our letter, and even in response to the subpoenas that our forever chairman, may he rest in power, Elijah Cummings signed in his last official act before his transition. It's shameful but consistent. So um, I hope that you can answer the questions that I have. USCIS and ICE have continuously refused to identify who made the decision to end consideration of deferred action at USCIS. I can only assume it is because no one wants to put their name on such a disastrous, cruel, and un-American policy. And the government officials who made that decision ought to be held to account. Mr. Cuccinelli, I remind you that you are under oath before us today. Who made the decision that USCIS would stop accepting and processing deferred action requests on August 7th. That was my decision as the acting director. <clears throat> and you stand behind that decision? That decision's been reversed. The reversal, yes, okay. But to date, those families have received no notification confirming the reversal of that. Can you tell me why that is? I think they have. Um, we are a, a paper agency when it comes to matters like this. So when cases are closed, literally a physical file is wrapped up and mailed to a storage facility. And so when we reopen cases, I'm we sorry. literally I'm have sorry, to- Sorry, I'm running out of time. I apologize. I have to I'm just trying to answer the question. No, I apologize, sir. I just I have to reclaim my time. So Mr. Cuccinelli, would it be fair to say then that you are not aware of some of the most consequential decisions and policies uh, coming out of your agency? since initially you said you did not know that it was coming. Uh, I did not say that today. Earlier today in your testimony, okay. Yes or no, Mr. Cuccinelli, did anyone at the White House play a role in this decision? Uh, this was an agency decision um, solely, and um, uh, other than discussion within the Department of Homeland so Security. Reclaiming, I'm sorry, did Stephen Miller play a role in this decision or not? So I'm not gonna get into a specific commentary back and forth, but I made this decision 
uh, the only discussions had so over the I'm course sorry, of the again, for the record, the court, over the, yes, Mr. this is for the record. And as you noted, I'm under oath, so I yes, want to be completely oath, so truthful. I, so then this and is I can't very do that if answer. I can't be complete. So yes or no? I'm not going to just answer the way you want me to answer. I'm going to give no, you an no, honest and accurate answer. No, no, I'm asking you to answer yes or no. Was the president involved in this decision? We cannot, as you well know, talk about content of decision, discussions with the White House. I'm sorry, but you just said House. that you made the decision. Yes. Okay, so was the president involved, yes or no? That should I be made simple. this decision. Was Stephen alone? Uh, the gentlelady's time has expired. Um, thank you very much.